and welcome to episode 35 of the No Excuses podcast. I'm not having a very good day because I just recorded a very short bit to put at the beginning of the podcast with my new hat on, which I'll show you in more detail in a minute. Recorded that, took my hat off and I didn't have any sound and it looks like my fairly new microphone is no longer working but I'll have a play and, and see what's happening. I also look a bit red and shiny, but when I look in the mirror, I don't. <laughs> oh, let's just run with it, shall we? You know me. No excuses. It's called that for a reason. As in, I don't like making excuses for my behaviour or no, that sounds wrong. Let's just get on with it. Episode 35. Um... And I'll say a big hello to some new subscribers. My name is Anne and I live in the middle of England in Worcestershire with my husband, Tom, who is out flying at the moment, which is why I can't ask him to put my uh, hat back on me. And um, our dog who's grunting behind me, sort of. We've given him a new... Uh, we've bought him a, a bed, a flat bed from Wilco to see if he'd like it because he's getting old and he likes to lie outside in the sunshine um, and because he's getting old I was thinking his bones lying on concrete and things and he seems to really really like his new mattress so he's behind me he's usually a very quiet dog but you may hear the occasional grunt or even the squeak of his favourite toy Piggy I'm already waffling my fringe is a bit long and it needs cutting and I probably could have done it because during the, before I podcast it's going to be one of them isn't it bouncy bouncy I'm like Tigger today I haven't even had any coffee or anything so can't blame that <clears throat> and my voice is a bit gruff probably because I haven't done a lot of talking so far today anyway I should have cut my fringe it's making me look a bit cross-eyed or it's getting in my eyes a bit uh, I'm due at the hairdressers next Wednesday but unfortunately I'm going to have to cancel because Tom is going to see his mum it's Mother's Day Sunday and his mum's birthday on the 2nd of April and he likes to go in between the two so I've got a home alone day I've got a bit of a home alone day this afternoon he, he went out about half twelve and I think it's about quarter past one now. So I've um, slapped some makeup on me. Which I might talk about. Well, I would have talked about a bit at the end of this show. But um, because the, the light is so strong here. And I haven't got any other lights on because Tom's out. You're just going to have to watch me a bit more patchy today, I'm afraid. So... Let's get going. I've only been talking for four minutes. Uh, let's get into the real stuff. Today we'll talk about a couple of finished objects. Uh, change of heart again. But you know, I like to admit <laughs> everything I do to you. Uh, and you um, want to progress on a couple of 12 cast ons uh, and a couple of acquisitions. And I also want to tell you about some patterns I've bought. So, um, I was, right, let's, I was going to say what I was wearing, which was a hat, but of course it's not anymore. And I'm sorry if my hair's a bit messed up, I can't reach it to straighten it really. Not that Tom does my styling for me, you understand. That would be rash. Uh, I am wearing the um, Wensleydale Long Wall cardigan it's Aaron White you can just about see the pattern there it's a broken rib pattern I saw it on found it on YouTube and I think it was called like Andalusian stitch pattern or something no idea that's what it's commonly called just a broken thing it um, it does shed a little bit rather than pale but it's lovely and warm um, and it's a staple isn't it a navy cardigan uh, I prefer v-neck cardigans really because I think they they look better on me with big boobies and things but uh, I've got a number of crew necks so 
the next cardigan I'm making is going to be v-neck as well so yeah I've got my v-neck Wensleydale Longwall navy blue cardigan I think it's called Semmer Water but I'll put the links below of course the pattern is just from a family album pattern I've got a patents book that I've mentioned before that's got Aaron patterns and um, I've got an Aaron one and a DK one and I just put a stitch pattern into the existing um, measurements and stitch counts hmm. okay right let's talk about uh, the podcast generally we are uh, we have a few new subscribers hello and welcome I'm really pleased you found me I am um, quite happy poddling along with the number of subscribers I've got but you're very welcome to join me I uh, sit here and talk about my um, progress lack of change of mind with my knitting mainly I do a little bit of sewing mainly bags at the moment wonky ones at that. Uh, some crochet and I do want to try some more crafts. I've got various kits and things that I'm trying to get into. But I need to put the knitting down. And that's a big problem for me. Is picking up the knitting and enjoying what I'm doing. And thinking, well, I want to try the other thing. But can I be bothered to get it out and everything, you know. But the summer's the time for me to sit outside and try something new, hopefully. Let's talk about the mouths. The jump along mail, I've just updated them. I've gone into Ravelry and saw some new entries. If you've entered on Instagram and you haven't used the hashtag, which are down below for the two mails that we've got running at the moment, then please just send me a private message or email me the details and I'll add you onto the spreadsheet. That's not a problem at all. The jump along ends next week. It ends on the 31st of March. It is for any adult size cardigan jumper top with any length of sleeve we have a few entries in at the moment um, and i will use a random number generator to pull the prize haven't quite decided the prize as always for me will be a bag that i've made and a skein of yarn i haven't yet decided on the skein of yarn because i want it to be something related to spring and I think I've got the perfect thing upstairs in the loft, being all wrapped up safe. Um, but I need to get it down. So I can't show it you, can I? And I haven't quite decided which one either. I have a choice. <laughs> anyway, yes, um, somebody will be in receipt of that. And it will be announced on the next podcast in a couple of weeks. So I'm happy to post anywhere in the world. But if you're... Um, a long way away i outside europe then it will be by economy because then i can put more into the prize but it'll take a bit longer to get to you um and the other one is to try something new and we've had a few lovely entries into that as well uh, something new in 22 i know there's quite a few um podcasters or groups of podcasters doing a similar thing and if you've entered into mine I would encourage you to go and find the others and enter into that as well. Um, I don't know what their criteria is, but mine are very loose. If you've not done it before, then I'm happy for you to enter. Just because I like to encourage as many people as possible. I think I'm talking quite quickly. Let's calm it down. Okay, we're going to talk about um, the knitting now. First of all, we... I'll show you my hat, but um, this is the Cloche Divine. It's one of the 12 cast ons that I did at Christmas as part of Angie's um, Yarn and Yarns 12 cast ons. I did nine. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. It's worsted or Aran weight, I think. That is like a fake bow that you do with tuck stitches. It's got a moss stitch brim and the brim. It's fastened, can you see that? Sorry, it's fastened. I've just put the points and fastened them roughly the same height um, either side of the seam. 
it's knit flat so if you're keen on knitting flat and you don't mind a bit of seaming this is a lovely pattern it comes in three sizes and because i've got a great big head i've knit the biggest um, i think it's been quite useful tom doesn't like it which is to be expected because it's not just a classic hat it's a bit different um the only thing i haven't done very well and it doesn't necessarily show up very well on here is i can see the seam and that is mattress stitch and usually my mattress stitches are quite good i can't normally see where they are all the time not as noticeable as that um i'll show you the inside of the mattress stitch you can see that it's nice and raised it's not like i haven't taken actually looks quite nice doesn't it a mattress a reverse mattress stitch on reverse stocking stitch mattress stitch sewn up inside out and reverse stocking stitch it looks quite nice i think it's like a nice raised um if you can get it neat enough it's not um a raised um it's a nice detail to have anyway i like this it i knitted the 24 inch one i think which is roughly what my head measures it's to hold my big brain obviously a lot of gaps in that brain um but yeah it's it's nice it's knitted with two strands of yarn that this very very nice lady and she knows who she is donated to me and the podcast and i showed you some of the yarn before um and i've put two strands together they're both singles so i wouldn't have put them into there's one skein each different colors and i will dig them out in a sec and show you uh, but i like the overall effect because the one is more colorful than the other that's better look perhaps i should put my face up close maybe not um well, you can see there's a lovely array of colours in there and it's nice and soft and it's nice and bouncy. I'm going to pause here and I'm going to get the yarn. Oh yeah. So this is the first yarn, a very colourful one. And this is by um, a company called Yarn To You. And it's in the... Um, flower meadow it, and it's a it's a, a single merino uh, you can't really flower meadow there and that's pretty it's got um, a whole array of colors that's coming up fairly well it's a bit duller than that and then the other yarn is this one and this one didn't have a ball band on it got little flecks of um that looks like mustard it's duller than that again Again, it's pretty, and the two of them have made a really, really nice fabric. Um, so, yeah, there we go. So that's my cloth divine. I haven't weighed it yet to find out how many metres it took. Uh, but as you can see, I've got a fair bit of um, I've got a fair bit of yarn left. Um, in theory, you could do a second one. <laughs> if you're going to knit this pattern, uh, it tells you to break the yarn. Um, at one point and then go and do the, this little tab here which is like around the stitches um, I wouldn't I didn't I, I just took yarn from the center of the ball did that little tab and then carried on knitting with my um, with my uh, yarn that was still attached you can see just the center decreases you know just an ordinary pretty and I'm really pleased with that so it's going to be a nice addition when the weather gets cold again probably very soon because we've had a glorious week here so i'm just going to move back slightly and talk to you about my other fo i have finished tom's jumper cardigan blanket i'm still waiting for the yarn from uh, needle and fred and i'm gonna to have to ask her whether she's forgotten about it um I know she said she, she's behind with her orders, so I'd like him to have some wear out of it this year after all the effort it's taken me to knit the cardigan. But my finished object for Tom is his blanket, and I'm going to put a photograph in here, a couple of photographs. Um, I got it to the length I wanted, and then I went round and round and round uh, in the same stitch pattern, and I'm really pleased with it and he seems pleased with it it's big enough for him to sit on the settee 
he can share it with the dog if he wants to and we're all happy it took me about two and a half hours to weave it the ends in i started off weaving the ends in very precisely and some were because i've got a I made it with two strands of uh, four ply yarn and a lot of it was magic ball and I hadn't really allowed long enough threads to weave in on some of the knots I'd put in and I'd found myself uh, if you know magic knot I use the the two knot method where you pull them together so the idea is I don't get parted and I was finding that I was pulling on the um one of the ends to poke it through the knots were parting and that would weaken the process weaken um yeah it would, would weaken why you've done it in the first place so can't find me words um i started meticulously doing everything and then after about half an hour i thought no nah, i'm just going to put everything in the same eye of the needle and just poke it through a couple of times try to weave it back on itself where i could and some of the yarn is a bit sticky because it's chopped fable uh, or it's opal so it's not as slick as the um, merino superwash so i think it's going to be all right i'm confident it's not going to fall apart um, but my patience wore thin and i thought i'm doing all this for nothing it's a blanket so yeah i'm pleased with that it weighs um i can't remember what it weighs but it's just over two miles of yarn in there so another two miles of yarn out of my stash notwithstanding the fact i bought i used one of the um yarn that i bought from drops fable because i thought I, um i thought i was gonna run out but yeah so i'm really pleased with that that's another tick in the box and um i can forget about blankets for a short while but i do like making blankets and it's also nice to have something crochet to do when i'm um knitting in the day to have crochet in the evening so yeah there we go so let's talk about what i've been knitting i'm going to tidy up and as if by magic i'll be back in a sec hello I'm warning you, Ginny, I'm going to talk about grey things for a while because that seems to be what I'm knitting on at the moment. Same colour. As you go and bang your head on the table, and I wouldn't blame you if you did because certainly it's how I felt like doing it, I'm going to show you <laughs> the latest iteration with this yarn, which is the Drop Soft Tweed and the... Um, mohair and silk from plume willow and log this is it's all in one at the moment so i'm knitting on the back this is a v-neck cardigan i've just dropped the ball of wool on the floor um but i want to show you you can't really see much it's um a v-neck cardigan with rib at the bottom but i just want to show you the stitch pattern can you see that I quite like this. I have finally settled on what I want to make out of this yarn. And I've driven myself mad with it. It was an orchid jumper when it was a soft tweed on its own. And then it became the kudzu, which I talked about last time. But the yoke shaping was obviously way out and it was too much. And I undid that and I mixed it with the mohair then. And then the last time I spoke to you, I'd started, or I was going to start, I can't remember which, on the Blossom Jumper by Along Avec Anna, and I'd bought the pattern. Um, I won't waste that pattern. I will knit it because it's an easy, fairly easy lace pattern to do. But I wasn't happy with it with the mohair. It just didn't look right to me. And that sounds silly. But anyway, I then decided to another cardigan pattern that i already had which was the right gauge more or less was the jack rose pattern by thea coleman of baby cocktails and i'll put a photograph of her design here uh, and basically it's a long line 
v-neck cardigan and she's put short sleeves on hers and she's put patch pockets on so what i've done is i've shortened it because i saw a lovely photograph in one of the projects where it was a short sleeved short shorter cardigan i can't cope with a long cardigan i'd be sitting on it and that wouldn't work for me so um i decided i looked at it did my look measure my swatch again that i'd done with this um yarn and i thought yeah this is going to work decided on the size to do did a little bit of maths not much anyway i started knitting it and you can tell by looking at the pattern without me giving anything away that it's a simple lace um it's clusters of yarn overs knitted together or sSKs very simple um and it's just repeated all over um for somebody stop saying um Anne. for somebody who wanted an introduction to lace it would be ideal i think but as I was knitting it, I was thinking I'm got the same problem that I did with the blossom jumper because I wasn't keen on the lace pattern in this particular yarn. I'm quite happy with the lace pattern in my love note in mohair and wool, but for some reason it wasn't working for me in my head. I can't explain it. But of course, I just finished the shoreline cardigan for Michelle, which I've posted off to her and she promises me some pictures back of her wearing it and I quite like the granite stitch in that but I found that hard to do on my hands hard it was hard on my hands to do I should say so I went on YouTube or went on Google and looked at horizontal stitch patterns and it came up with this this was on a blog I'll have to find it for you I think it was on a blog it might have been on a YouTube and it's called chain stitch and if you look at it it does rem it is very reminiscent of a chain where you've got the links coming in and out like a belcher chain you've got the links coming in and out of each other at you know right angles and so finally i have the pattern and the yarn combination i want so by the time i see you again in a fortnight i'm hoping to have finished the body I can't promise that I'm going to be finishing the sleeves. I can't decide what length of sleeve to do. It's a warm cardigan. Should really do long sleeve and make it useful for the winter. I don't really want the look of... Um, I wear a lot of long sleeved T-shirts in the winter. I don't like the look of having the short sleeve cardigan with the long sleeved um, T-shirt. If it was a blouse and it was pretty, that would be different in my mind. So I'm going to see if I've got enough yarn, it's going to be um, long sleeves or three quarter sleeves. I'm not putting any pockets on it. And um, what's the other thing? The V-neck's nice because it starts and it gets slightly wider on the band as it goes around your neck. Like, like you've got a short collar, but you've cut the bit that folds over off. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm going to keep that as well. So that's my uh, sort of Jack Rose cardigan. I've put, I'm just using the measurements from it, uh, the stitch count. So I can't really put it in Ravelry as the Jack Rose cardigan. Although all the construction will be um, Thea Coleman's. And because I'd finished the cloche and I'd finished Tom's blanket, you know, um, if you've been here a while, you know I tend to have two projects on the go at any one time. And um, I wanted to knit, I wanted to start on the on a shawl again. And one of the 12 cast-ons, my nine cast-ons at Christmas, was the Unfolding Shawl by Sally Norland. And this is being done in all Snelden lace. Um can't remember i've got three greys as i've said to you before um and this is the mid one i think i'll put it down below we'll put it on the screen it's very fine and sometimes it goes so fine i think it's going to break it's so but i'm sure it'll bloom a bit when it's been washed 
whether that will give it any strength I don't know but I um, I've done one pattern repeat and you start with the maximum number of stitches on your needle it's a triangle with a straight side um, so yeah start with the maximum number and then you work up and I think that's on the schematic anyway so I'm not giving anything away I got a bit messed up with the lace so I've put stitch markers in which I don't always do but this is long and it's if you make a mistake it's um, a long way to go back to uh, rectify it let me just see which is the right side out so I can show you that is the right side I'm not very good at holding things up I'll see if I can take a, a better photograph um, but you can see how fine it is I'm putting my fingers up through it it's very very pretty the lace doesn't go all the way up you can see that on the photographs and um, I'm a bit addicted to it at the moment once I get the lace over and done with I'll probably go back to the cardigan but um, I'm, I'm quite enjoying the lace I, I like doing lace I understand lace but I understand the compensation if you decrease you have to increase or you know even if you don't do it on the, on the same row but on this particular pattern um, the lace is worked on both sides uh, but the stitch count doesn't change so that's useful and it's also useful when you've got stitch markers so um, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this and it's it's quite a, a nice knit but I'm sorry Ginny grey Great or silver, 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 yeah. So, those are my two knits at the moment, and I'm pleased with both of them. Makes a change, doesn't it? I'm really pleased that I'm happy with what I'm doing with the drops tweed and the mo and the plume um mohair. I've wound it all up so I know how much I've got to use. I've you know, I've got more of the drops tweed, I ordered extra, I've got more of the drops tweed than I have the mohair, but I think I'm hoping. That I'm going to have enough at least to do the body and then I can make a decision about the sleeves. If the sleeves have to be plain with just drops tweed then so be it but we'll see. Fingers crossed folks. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. I'll see you in a minute again. <laughs> I'm laughing you know. <laughs> Uh, because uh, I know I said I was going to have a no buy yarn yeah but I keep getting tempted I'm not buying as quick as I used to but I've spent too much money already and it's ridiculous um, but Tom just laughs at me you know anyway to cut a long story short no not a long story um, Emma of Yarnworthy put up a uh was it a very generous discount for her birthday so I went and had a look now I will say that Emma's website isn't the easiest to negotiate and I've found this with a lot of the new websites for yarn and I don't know whether it's something that's occurred to you but you have to sort of scroll through everything everything's separate down 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 and I find that easier on a laptop or a tablet but on my phone it may be just me because of you know hot slight difficulties holding me phone but um yeah you i find it i prefer to see things on a grid personally so i can see more things in one go um and although emma's doesn't do what some of them do where load more load more load more it'd be nice to see the range on a couple of pages and then you could dive in that's just my personal preference but I've noticed that it can be I find it off-putting to have to keep scrolling down and down and down all the time especially if they've got what quite a wide range of things but I, it seems to be the way that websites are going at the moment okay can't have it all my own way and it doesn't stop me from buying not very often anyway Emma had a discount and I went and had a look um, and I've literally just opened this box. It's a little bit lighter than I wanted, but this is 
what's it called? I can't remember. Casper. Sorry. Ginny. Yes, it is grey. It's a pale grey. It's almost... It, and cream. It's got a bit of cream in it. If you watch... watch Started watching Emma's podcast, actually, from Yarnworthy. There's her... Name. I started watching a thing. I need to go back and finish that. So this is... Guess what it's made out of? 100%... BFL. Now the reason I've bought it, and I do have a reason for buying it, maybe I shouldn't have bought two, but it discounts a discount, right? I bought it because in my stash I've got a beautiful gradient set by Rivenitz. Um, and I'll put it a photo in here. I bought this, I don't remember. I think it was the last time I went to Wonderwall actually. And I will see Becky and Marcus again when we go to. No doubt I will buy something off them because I can't resist their yarn. And I'm also interested to see what their new version of their BFL, which I love so much, um, feels like now. Uh, yeah, so I bought that and I want to make a cowl, either the Litmus Cowl uh, by Jude Harper, which I understand is a free pattern. Or the Recollect Cow, and I think that's Jen Stein Gas, but if I'm wrong, obviously I'll put it down here. And I needed a grey, but I wanted a pale grey, not something too dark um, to put with it. And so this is going to be with it. And again, I might have enough for two, because I've, the colours that I've got from the River Knits Gradient, there's quite a lot of meterage in there, and it may be that I can make two and give one away as a gift next Christmas so we'll see that's my plan or I could do my own sort of little thing and even put it on the craft fair I've got to stop thinking like that haven't I oh have I got enough hours in the day to do everything I want to do never <laughs> do I care no I just have fun and then the other acquisition which has taken about four months to arrive um, I think we cancelled it so um, thank you, Banggood, which is a Chinese um, company that uses will use PayPal, unlike AliExpress. Some of the uh, suppliers on AliExpress don't use PayPal. So we've not used that particular company. But Tom uses Banggood for electronic stuff. Uh, and usually things take about three weeks. They do have a UK warehouse, but... Um, so it does vary, but he bought me a neck lamp. It was about a tenner, I think. And I can put it on myself. And I won't put it on because it will, it's very bright. But you can twist it so you can point it at your work. And you can, it's got three levels of light. It's got warm cool and then it's got a mixture of the two um but also you can apparently i've just seen the instructions you can bend it so you can actually put it on the desk and because it's directional you can um use it for reading or you don't have to wear it around your neck you can just put it at your knitting or cross stitch or whatever you're doing and i really like it now because it's been getting darker later I've been using this for my knitting, especially with the unfolding shawl where the stitches are very small because um, the yarn's so, um, so thin. Then, um, I, I, stop saying um. Then I'm really, I'm really impressed with it. I've had gadgets before that I've not liked, but I really, really like this. I can't put a link into where I got it from. I'll, I'll see if I can. Because one of the downsides is they don't always have the same... Um, goods available to you and I'm not a really big fan of buying a lot of gadgets and things I'm not going to use from uh, from anywhere really China and uh, make so many things good quality poor quality and everything in between 
that you do take a punt on whether this is going to be good or fall apart. Most of the stuff we've had from there uh, has been good. They are only sellers. They are not the manufacturers. Tom's got a phone from them um, and he's very happy with it. It's better than mine. Could nick it. Uh, I did say I was going to try and record on Tom's phone one time. But of course he's got it with him today. So yeah, my neck lamp is uh, sits comfortably. It's lightweight and I can take it on and off myself, which is really important to me these days with my um, mobility, my general mobility, not just going places. It seems to be getting worse by the month at the moment, probably because it's winter. And then my final acquisition, and before I talk about patterns, um, is I bought a little packet of stuff. I'm not going to take it out of the packet. From Vintage Butterfly Crafts. Those have got little stamps and papers, ephemera in uh, lots of different things. Uh, other things in there, little sticky stickers. And then some papers, very pretty papers. Um, only small things, but and it wasn't expensive. And I think it's going to be, um, I can have some fun. Sticking them and sticking, cutting out and sticking in the book. And that's one thing I really want to get into is my journaling. If there was two of me, would that make it better or worse? I know. I'd probably argue with myself all the time. Anyway, so that's my uh, physical acquisitions. For the month. I've done too badly, have I? Liar. <laughs> Let's. I just want to show you some patterns that I've bought. I bought um, from on Ravelry. I went and had a look. I was shown on Instagram. Uh, something came up in my feed, and it's a Ukrainian designer. And it's the Mallow Shawl. I haven't written the name down. I'll put it on the screen. I've bought that. It's a lovely DK shawl. I'm thinking of doing it larger, but in four ply. But I'll see. Uh, I need to read the pattern and see whether I think that's going to work. That's a triangular textured shawl. The next one I bought, the thing I bought, and it's partly Leslie's fault. Uh, I've not quite enough yarn is the Twisted Stitch Source Book by Nora Gorn. I'd seen this advertised and I'd seen it on a different podcast, but I'd not done anything. I'd not bought it because, yeah, I just hadn't got around to buying it. I knew I wanted it eventually. But when I saw Leslie having it, I got FOMO, serious FOMO, and found it on a, uh, I found it on eBay, actually. It was a bit cheaper. It wasn't available on Amazon. And it was a bit cheaper than some of the other uh, websites. It was still a bookstore, so that's fine. I try to make sure I'm buying... Oh, I don't know whether I make sense, really. Buying from a bona fide supplier, you don't know, do you? But this, this it's a lovely book. I love it. Now, I've got that. It's a big book, so I'm not going to hold it up. I've got that, and I'm definitely going to use it. I'm going to I like at least two of the patterns that are in there, the full patterns that are in there. And I will have a look through it in the one of the future podcasts. I do love a twisted stitch. It's one of my favourite things to do, to look for in a pattern, because I like the relief it gives you. I mean, OK, twisted pearl is a bit of a pain. But, yeah, I do I do like the, the, um, the overall effect it gives you. So... And then finally, I went and searched for some Ukrainian. I went on to Ravelry, put designer country, U Ukraine. And I mean, equally, really, why aren't we buying from Russian designers? The average person is not part of this absolute, absolute mess that, we're, that they're in. You know, we're in. You know, we're all, I mean, I'm 
I'm not, I know I'm not personally responsible, but it's. I thought we'd done with wars. I thought it was going to be terrorism from now on, not wars. This is absolutely ridiculous. The sooner somebody shoots him, the better. Well, that'd be too good for him, really. He should. He needs to stand. Putin needs to stand for war crimes. And I don't normally cover. It's not political, though, is it? It's human rights, really. Anyway, enough said. I went and looked for a Ukrainian designer and I found this lovely set. Again, I'm going to put a name at the bottom and it's the Brescule set, B-R-E-S-C-U-L. And in there, there's, um, and I'm going to put pictures up for each of them. There's a hat and mittens. There's a vest and I've put, on the vest, I've, you know, sleeveless vest, I've put um, a photo, uh, particularly from Ravelry, of the uh, cabling pattern, which I think is in all the designs. There's a jumper. There's a um, cardigan, which doesn't appear to have the same level of cabling on, but I still like it. And some of these are done in different weights as well. And finally, the thing that I was most attracted to was the yoke jumper, which has got lovely cable in and it's quite loose fitting uh, as well. It's a slightly different shape. So, yeah, there's a, there's a nice range of different patterns and I can see myself potentially making all of them. So I'll put the link down below if you're interested. Um, she sells them all individually. But there was a good saving if you bought all and I like them all because I thought the hat and the mittens as well would be good for making gifts, etc. And it was a bit of support. But yes, I mean, that's just occurred to me, really, that the, you know, the average Russian is in need of money more than anything at the moment. But you don't know whether things that have been bought on the Internet, I wouldn't put anything past the uh, Russian government to take money out of all different sources because they're going to have their backs to the wall aren't they that's a horrible phrase really but still my dog who was behind me has just got up walked down the garden and he's now sat i can see his ears in the back of his neck he's now sat in the shed window door um where he's going to get nice and warm in the sun on him i'm going to go out there in a minute because i need to eat lunch it's all ready got some salad potato salad ham a bit of cheese and obviously i'll have to share it i put an extra tomato in for bertie i nicked a slice of ham out of tom's sandwiches not really had plenty um which bertie will have a bit of because you know you have to share don't you really and he's such a good boy so finally what have we been up to well i can't remember what i've been doing after time i We'll tell you about this week. I went to... I didn't really do anything last week. But on Monday, I was going to go to Ikea with Mum. Now, Ikea is about 20-odd 20, 20 miles away from us. Straight up the M5. Um, pick Mum up. Get on the M5 at Bromsgrove at Lydia Ash. And then bomb up the motorway. And Ikea is right next to the Wednesby Turning. If it looks like the motorway is not flowing very well or there's delays and I'll get off at West Brom and go around the, the long way through Wednesday. But um, I sat up in bed on Monday morning. Um, I don't know why, but I, I turned to put my hand on Bertie and tickle him because he was at the bottom of the bed. And my head just went and it was a bit like mild vertigo. I had vertigo. Probably about 17 years ago now, the doctor had given me my blood pressure tablets plus a diuretic. Um, and he wanted my blood pressure to be perfect. And he was a new young doctor to the practice. So I took them, you know, I took them. I thought they would do me good. But what they did was they absolutely obliterated my blood pressure. I sat up in bed one morning to turn over about five o'clock in the morning and it honestly felt like my brain was being highly vibrated like a jackhammer inside my head. 
Do 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 like ABS braking. Do 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 do. Oh, it was horrible. I went to work. I didn't feel very well. Went to work. Went next day. And the day, two days after that, I had the same thing in the morning. So by then I felt quite poorly. I went to the doctor, and he tried to get the blood pressure reading on me, and he couldn't get the return value at all. And I said to him, "Shall I go to work?" And he went, "No, you should go home and rest, and don't take any mini." Any more blood pressure tablets for a month. And the doctor, I worked on the emergency doctor in the practice at the time. Um, he was quite concerned about me not being able to get another re a, a, the reading. And um, I, my actual doctor who put me on them, the youngster, he apologised. He said, I'm sorry, you know, because I was poorly for months. I had a funny head for months. I went back to work after a few days because I'm stubborn and it actually takes quite a lot for me to be off sick so yeah anyway I had a bit of tiny bit of that on Monday so it didn't leave much of a residue this time because sometimes my head rushes do and I think it's my neck I think it's so much congestion in my neck I took it very carefully on Monday didn't do anything to and then Tuesday morning, got up and went to Ikea with Mum. We had a lovely time. We got in and out of the car twice, which is unusual for me because we then went into TK Maxx and M&S Food, which is near. There's like a shopping, um, a little row of shops um, nearby with Next M&S Food and various different things. <clears throat> So I filled up on hot cross buns, uh, came back home, sat in the garden because it was lovely. Uh, this wheelchair tilts, so it tilts like that. And I put my neck back like that and I squashed the back of my neck and I went dizzy again. So, yeah, so I'm very careful at the moment. I'm being very careful with it. I, I do think it is my neck. I've been walking with sticks for years. Um, I've got a lot of, I you know, my arms on my legs really, and it's starting to. But if I do that most of the time, I could just hear crunching. <laughs> no good. As I put going to see the doctor, they they won't do anything for me. Um, it's not pain as such, but she may be able to give me something for my head. I take Stugaron, which is seasick this tablet that the doctor recommended to me when I had the vertigo the first time. And that is very, very good. Uh, and I do take it occasionally if I have a, a, a bad dizzy spell, a uh, head rush, and it stays with me. Sometimes I can have a head rush and it doesn't affect me. Sometimes I have one and I can still feel it afterwards. So, yeah. So, yes, that's what I've done this week. Um... And I've not really done much else for the last couple of weeks since I've seen you. I probably have, and I can't remember. Oh, useless. So I'm going to go now because I'm getting a bit too hungry. I'm getting a bit hot, you know, when you, your blood sugar drops. So I need to go and eat. But I'll leave the phone, the phone, yeah. Leave my phone set up in case there's something I've forgotten and I want to come back and add it after me and Bert have shared my lunch in the garden. So, in case I don't come back, I will see you very soon. Don't forget to enter the jump along if you want to. It's obviously, you know, your choice. Um, let me know if you need any help entering and don't forget the other mail as well. The uh, Something New in 22. The hashtags and all the details are below and where to contact me. I love you chatting to me. You're a lovely bunch of people. And I'll we'll see you again at the beginning of April, otherwise, um, with the results of the Jump Along competition. And the. But I'll see you before I go to Wonderwall as well. You take care. Look after yourselves. Have a good weekend. And um, I'll see you soon. Bye.